Hi everyone, today we're going to look at what to eat for diabetes. That's both management and prevention of diabetes. It can get much more complicated and individualized, so I really strongly recommend meeting with a registered dietitian and a certified diabetes educator to discuss further. So right now we're meeting with clients virtually, so feel free to reach out if you'd like to discuss nutrition or diabetes management further. So again, this will just be a very brief overview and the plate method is probably the simplest way of looking at nutrition for diabetes and diabetes prevention. So it includes half of your plate as vegetables, a quarter of your plate as starchy foods, a quarter of your plate as protein foods, fruit and berries for dessert, and milk or water to drink. This again isn't for everyone, but this can kind of function as a good overview. Before getting into the different sections of the plate method, I want to highlight the building blocks of food. So all foods are made up of these four different building blocks in kind of different amounts. However, most foods contain more of one building block than others, which is why we will talk about carbohydrate foods, protein foods, etc. today. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into carbohydrate containing foods specifically today. A carbohydrate is essentially a sugar or rather a glucose forming food. I'm going to use glucose or sugar interchangeably today. When you use your glucometer, you're going to check your blood glucose, or again, your blood sugar. Carbohydrates are really just long chains of sugar. Generally, the longer the chain, the less sweet. Your body breaks down these chains of sugar into individual units, aka glucose, upon digestion, and from there your blood sugar rises after a meal. An example is potatoes. This is a starchy food. It doesn't taste sweet, but it'll still be converted to sugar in the body. Let's look at carbohydrate or sugar forming foods on the plate method. We've got a quarter of the plate of starches, fruit or berries for dessert, and dairy products. Let's look at some examples. Here are some starches, so that includes all grain products, potatoes, and corn. The whole grain or the brown version of these products are best for blood sugars overall, health, and for overall disease prevention. That's because the brown versions are higher in fiber, which slows down digestion and is very important for gut health. Here are some examples of fruit and berries. Again, kind of self-explanatory. The whole fruit is much better than the juice. That's because it takes longer for your body to digest the whole fruit in its whole food structure, meaning the sugars are digested more slowly, released into the bloodstream more slowly, and your body has more time to produce insulin and kind of react to take that sugar and slash glucose from the bloodstream to the muscles, organs, etc., where it's gonna be used for energy. Juice, on the other hand, is essentially pure fruit sugar. It takes no time at all to be digested and will raise your blood sugars much quicker and higher than the fruit. Here are some examples of dairy products. The lower sugar products are best. So for example, milk versus chocolate milk and plain yogurt that you can kind of sweeten yourself with say honey or jam, etc., versus that flavored yogurt because you'll never use as much sugar as they're going to use. So as you'll kind of notice, these foods are also very nutritious. So even though they technically raise your blood sugar, they're still very important to include. Typically, most people can tolerate about one to two fists of these carbohydrate foods at one meal and about a half a fist to one fist of these carbohydrate foods at a snack. So again, this is kind of a typical um, recommendation. It doesn't work for everyone. It's again best to meet with a dietitian to see what works best for your body. Sugar forming slash carbohydrate containing foods also includes the junk foods, so sugary beverages, chips, chocolate bars, candy, etc. And this also includes the purer sources, sources of sugar, such as jam, honey, and actual sugar. So these are, of course, lower in nutrition. They have essentially almost no vitamins, minerals, and fiber, and are comparably very high in carbohydrates or sugar to the foods we talked about in the last slide, and they're digested very quickly. These foods should be considered treats and are still important to include in the diet because really all foods fit in a healthy diet. In order to maintain blood sugar balance, it's best to make some substitutions and potentially have less of these other carbohydrate containing foods at the meal. For example, the stuff that's highlighted in those little blue circles. Uh, so for example, if you're going to have a birthday cake, you may wish to not have that bannock or not have the berries at that meal or maybe have water instead of milk. So again, it's best to work with a dietitian to kind of navigate this piece as it can get quite complicated. And a dietitian can work with your medications, your current blood sugars, physical activity, lifestyle, etc., to kind of help you figure out the right diet for you. Switching gears a little, let's briefly look at protein foods, which is a quarter of the plate. So protein foods kind of blunt the effect of the carbohydrate foods, meaning when they're included at meals and snacks, they prevent the sugar from rising as high and rising as quickly as if they weren't included. 
They're very important, therefore, to include at really all meals and snacks for this reason. Protein foods includes all wild meats, eggs, poultry, fish, peanut butter, nuts and seeds, beans, lentils, legumes, etc. Uh, generally, fat is kind of naturally included in this category, so I didn't go into too much detail aside from that, and it helps kind of also blunt the effect of carbohydrate-containing foods. Lastly, we have vegetables as half the plate. Veggies are considered freebies because they're so low in carbohydrates and they're really high in fiber. With the exception of potatoes and corn, they generally don't raise your blood sugars, hence the freebie name. They're also loaded with antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals, which can kind of help prevent and manage all chronic diseases and just keep you healthy overall. And frozen and canned vegetables are just as good as fresh. If you'd like to learn more, feel free to reach out to the registered dietitians at PAGC. We're also all certified diabetes educators. Um, so you can reach us through our Facebook page, PAGC Dietitians, through email or phone, which are listed there. And our Facebook page also has information on virtual competitions and other health topics, so we'd love to see you there. Thank you so much for listening.